The world we live in is a beautiful place. Gray masses of clouds drift through the sky as wisps of sunlight cast through and dapple the leaves of rich color lying amiss on the gravelly, uneven trail. The foliage of trees is an array of warm hues that exude autumn season, and there's not a trace of wind to scatter remnants of summer's dying touch. Only one thing is disrupting the peace. A herd of 17 individuals hike the never-ending slopes of the well-worn path to make it to their destination. From Kennecott, Alaska, a 20th century miner's ghost town and a source of interest for the class of writers, to Root Glacier a mile and a half away. Breathing and idle chatter floats through the unsullied air as the group treks on past a stream bed with a small waterfall, and later a large boulder with moss clinging to its sides. At the back of the pack, one can find me. The throng of people comes past the thick of the trees, and I find myself staring out at the scene before me. Taking in the sight of the vast Kennecott Valley stretching for miles on end, my eyes absorb details. Snow-capped mountains reach for the sky into misty clouds. Through the vapor haze, bright morning skies extend and light falls down in a celestial glory. It's as if an artist came with his palette and painted it all, not an inch of his canvas barren from the strokes of an experienced hand. Everything is absolutely breathtaking. Glacier ice meets sedimentary sands at the bottom of a steep hillside path. Everyone sits upon the ground as they begin to explain the fundamentals of crampons. My new lifeline for keeping my feet firmly on the ground. The spiked teeth footwear grips the ice like claws, so we fasten to the slippery surface without falling. We stick our toes outwards for better traction, and when we take a step, we stomp our feet enough to get a good grip on the ice without breaking the crampons. It's one foot after the next with me, and it isn't until I glance back that I fully realize how completely amazing it all is. I couldn't help but smile ear to ear until I turn back around. The smile slowly fades away and I openly gawk in awe. No longer does solid ground splay in front of me, but a whole new terrain, a whole new world I've never had the chance to encounter, ice. Our crowd is led through it all. Slits in the frost carry petite streams of water. We amble past crags of ice with scars of glacial erosion and moulins that tear hundreds of thousands of feet. Harsh winds gust by, threatening to topple each and every one of us. It isn't until we finish our afternoon lunch and walk a bit more on the glacier that we come to a bull-like part where ice walls reach up as far as 20 feet. It is there that we stumble upon something magical, enchanting and fathomless blue water pools. They're as azure as a clear summer sky. I can't help but be caught entranced in its beauty. I reach to cup it in my hand and when it meets my lips, it's cold, cold and fresh.
Departing from the pools, my eyes take one last glance before staring ahead at the unmarked path. Our group starts winding back around to leave. Back to Kennecott. It's when we're at the edge of the glacier, about to retreat to civilization again, that I gaze transfixed at Alaska laid out before me, my feet gripping eyes hundreds of thousands of years old, and the moment hits me. All I can do in the end is stand here in this foreign land of ice and think, what a beautiful world indeed. This is Amber Leonard from Hawk News signing out.